14 years ago to this very night, I lost my parents. And you guys have been with me every single Christmas since then. You knew. We're going to the best Christmas party in New York City. So that gives us several hours to hit as many traditions as possible. Well, these three buddies have a tradition on Christmas Eve that goes back 10 years now. And what you're seeing in this movie is sort of the last time that they're gonna have this big night out on Christmas Eve. There's like a mystical party called the Nutcracker Ball that we learn about eventually that takes place on Christmas. And it's kind of like a secret party that's supposed to be the best party in the world. And we hear about it, we're always trying to find it, we can never find it. And it kind of becomes like our white whale on Christmas. And it's got a sweet origin story that has to do with three friends, you know, or two friends coming together that help a third friend out. Uh, in a really hard time in his life. And then this year, finally, we get tickets to it, and it's kind of poetic because it's our last year, so we figure, like, you know, we'll go out with the bash. We have decided to end this tradition. Chris is just too famous to hang out with us anymore. And Isaac's about to have a baby. You have been such a rock throughout this whole pregnancy. So now just focus on yourself. Whoa! Dreams? Is this cocaine? You haven't done cocaine for 11 years, I don't think. Yeah, no one has, I don't think. Holy. You know, it used to be this way. If you look at the old Eddie Murphy movies, oh, the Richard Pryor, Gene Wilder combos, you really love those movies because the characters were so unique and endearing. Like, you could identify with those guys and really want to go on that journey with those guys. And that's something that I think they've captured in a really unique way, specifically with this movie and with you know, my character, and even uh, Joe's character. You have one joint? She doesn't know that much about drugs. The proportions of this shit is all off. Hey, hey Ma, it's Chrissy Poo. Chris, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Here, Christmas! Aw, oh, sweetheart. Oh, you smell like weed. No? No? You know, Joe's kind of like the emotional core of the movie, which is perfect for Joe. He's also very funny in the movie, but it's a guy who doesn't quite know what he wants, doesn't quite know what he's doing. The guy I play in the movie, Ethan, he kind of is clinging to that past. He's maybe not so sure what his future holds or how to be uh, less of a young man and more of a just man. You know, and, and in that way, it's it's a classic coming of age story, which so many Christmas stories are. You guys missed her singing Miley Cyrus. She destroyed Wrecking Ball. You still like that song? Everybody does. You can cry to it. You can run to it. Yeah. You can party to it. Timeless. I came in like a wrecking ball. I never hit so hard. You see the movies and you're like, oh, these dudes just pick up a camera and throw together a movie. And it's like, no, a lot of insight and thought goes into it. A lot of people look at these movies and think, oh, it's easy, I can do that, until you get in the midst of one. Once we realize, like, oh, it's a Christmas movie, like, we can kind of, again, like, step into these realms and indulge in them a little bit more than we normally would. We were like, we can really make it, like, an unbelievably gratifying uh, cinematic experience. But at the same time, this movie also has uh, a lot of heart, a lot of something that, you know, some of the big, ridiculous, funny comedies don't have, uh, which is, you know, people and stories that actually resonate and, and are meaningful. And I think having that balance on Christmas is nice. Mm, don't you dare throw up in here. Swallow it like a girl would. I need a bark bag. No bark bag. <laughs> is it still happening? It's still happening a little. We did not kill Jesus! We did not do that! I came in 